Hey guys, welcome to How To Do Computers. I'm Mike, and today we'll be going over how to do a bare metal restore on a Proxmox or Debian slash Ubuntu based server install. There does not seem to be a whole lot of options out there for a bare metal restore for a Linux server. Most people recommend against an image based backup in favor of using something like Ansible or other similar softwares to store and rerun your configs in case of a failure and to simply do a clean install. For this we're going to be utilizing the free community edition of a software called Veeam. So getting this to work was a bit of trial and error as the documentation is not very clear. I'm guessing that's the point of purchasing a license with support. That being said, I recommend trying this out in a lab environment before you deploy it onto anything important just to make sure that it's going to work for you. At the very least, make sure to take a manual backup of some sort with something like Clonezilla. I won't be held responsible for any data loss incurred in this process. There are a few steps involved with this process, so I will make sure to document and attach all of the commands I use, as well as any necessary download links in the description below. So for this, we'll need a few things. One will be a Veeam account to download the necessary package. Then we'll need an SSH and an SFTP client. So first we'll go here to Veeam's website. It's a free account. I'm already logged in here as myself, but the account creation process is fairly straightforward, so I won't go over that here. Next, we'll need to grab an SSH client if we don't have one already. For this, I'll use PuTTY, and I'll go over why I'm using that here in a minute. And finally, we'll need an SFTP client, and for that, we'll use WinSCP, which can be downloaded here. Again, all of these links will be in the description. And then the last thing you'll need to do is once you have created and logged into your Veeam account, you'll go to this link here, and then you'll download a package for the Veeam agent for Linux. So scroll down here, you'll choose your operating system. In our case, since we're running Proxmox, we'll use Debian Ubuntu. Our architecture is going to be 64-bit, and then we'll click Get Link. So here we'll have two downloads. One is the repository package, which will effectively be a net installer for Veeam. The other will be a trial version for the Veeam backup and replication suite, so we won't be grabbing that now. And we'll go ahead and grab the repository package for Debian slash Ubuntu. So you'll download the file, accept the license terms agreements, Hit accept, and then you'll see in the downloads that you've downloaded a .deb file for Veeam. One more download we'll need from this page is going to be the recovery media. So we'll go ahead and download a copy of that, again for the x64 architecture. And I believe I already have this downloaded, so I'll cancel the download here. And so now, I'll assume that you have PuTTY and WinSCP downloaded and installed as well. Let's go ahead and launch WinSCP. I already have a configuration saved to connect to my Proxmox server here, but all you'll basically need to do here is set a file protocol, which is going to be SFTP, the host name and port number, which will be the IP address or host name of your machine, as well as the port number, which you should leave as 22. Then you'll enter your username and password, and then hit login. So here we're connected to our host. You should automatically connect to the home directory. And all I'm going to do is over here in my downloads folder, I'm going to take that veemreleased.deb file and I'm going to drag it over. And that should copy this over into the home directory of the Proxmox server. So as far as SFTP is concerned, you're finished with that. Now the reason I'm using PuTTY is because it actually has integration with WinSCP. So if you go up here and click on this icon, it'll actually open a session in PuTTY, which will automatically connect to the Proxmox server with the connection configuration that we have configured on WinSCP, sans the password, which we'll enter here. And so here you have an SSH connection into your Proxmox server. Now for good practice, we always want to run an apt update and apt upgrade, so I'll do that here. So now there's also a few packages that we'll need to grab. 
And for that, we'll use apt install, and then we're going to grab pve-headers, squashfs-tools, libiso burn one, and xor iso. So we'll go ahead and install those. And now a very important step, as it turns out, we're going to need to install the current Linux headers. And for that, we'll use apt-git install linux-headers dash dollar sign parentheses uname space dash r parentheses. And we'll run that. And then we will change our directory to the home directory or wherever you dragged the Veeam Debian package in our SFTP tool. And then we will install it with dpkg dash i period slash ve and if you hit tab it should auto finish the name of the file and then hit enter to install. Now we'll do another apt update. And then we'll run apt install veeam. Hit y here. And let's go ahead and clear our space. So now that we have the repository and packages for Veeam installed, simply type Veeam to launch Veeam. And here we will accept the terms of the license agreement and hit next. We'll go ahead and skip the patching of the Veeam recovery media for now. Hit next. And since we're using the free version, we will skip file location box here and then choose server since we're installing on a server and then hit finish. Now we'll hit C to configure a new job. I'll just give it the default name of backup job one and we're going to be backing up the entire machine. So here we can choose to use local storage, a network share or a Veeam backup and replication repository. One of the drawbacks with Veeam is that since we're backing up an entire system image, Veeam doesn't allow us to use local storage. So even if you had a separate hard drive installed in the machine just for backups, it won't accept it. We'll have to choose either a mounted USB attached storage device or a network share. If you would like to do this with an internally attached drive, please see my video on passing a drive through to a virtual machine. And from there, you can create a network share that you should be able to use for this. For this, we'll be using a network share, which I've created on a Windows VM running server 2019. So here I will choose shared folder. And of course, that's going to be SMB since we're using Windows. And the path is going to be 192.168.0.103. And then the directory is going to be PVE Veeam Backup. If the machine is joined to a domain, then you'll enter that here. This one isn't, so we'll simply enter the username and the password. And here you can set the number of restore points that you would like to keep. I'll leave that as the default seven for now. This can be configured later. And then we'll hit next. Here you can set additional options if you like. Backup encryption allows you to encrypt the backup. Active full allows you to do a full backup every time instead of a snapshot. And scripts allows you to use the more extensive scripting functionality of Veeam. I'll leave all of these off for now and then hit next. And here you'll choose whether you want the job to run automatically and then the schedule you would like it to run on. This schedule will be automatically added to your cron tab file. Again, I'll leave this as default just for now and hit next. And then we'll go ahead and hit finish and it will automatically start the job as we do that. Job will be started. And you can see that it is running. This may take a little while, so I will get back to you once the backup job has finished. So now that we have our Proxmox bare metal backup, we can test restoring in case of a complete drive failure. If you haven't already, go ahead and grab that ISO we mentioned before for the recovery media and burn it to a flash drive using a tool such as Rufus. Again, I have a, another video on how to create bootable media using Rufus. I will link that below as well. So we'll exit out of this machine and then I will swap over to another blank machine to see if we can restore this machine onto that one. So now we are booting our machine with the recovery media. There will be an SSH server auto start if you would like to access via SSH. I'll proceed without that for now. Again, check the license agreements and continue.
and then we'll go to restore volumes and we'll add that same shared folder from before which again was 192.168.0.103 with the path of pve veeam backup no domain username and then password enter to connect and here we can choose the backup job that we had created before I have a few others in this folder but the one we created before was backup job one I'll go into that directory and here there should be a .vbm file named after your backup job hit enter to open that file enter again and once more and so here we have our current system which is SDA which is a completely blank hard drive and then we have the partition structure of our backed up drive, which has our Proxmox install and all of the associated partitions. So again, I'll hit enter here, restore from, I'll choose SDA since that's the drive that Proxmox was installed to, and then S to start restore, enter again, and the restore should begin. Again, this may take a few moments, so I will get back to you once that's complete. So now our restore is at 100%. The status says it was a successful restore. So we will hit escape to go back to the main menu and then we will reboot the machine. And so it looks like we are booting into Proxmox. Let's go ahead and go back and connect to make sure that everything looks right. All right, we are back on our Windows machine. So let's go ahead and try to connect to the newly restored Proxmox server using the same address it's coming up for us let's go ahead and log in and it looks like our virtual machines and our storages are back where they should be we are able to access everything as if we simply cloned the drive and restored that way so i would call this a success and i believe that will be all for now as always, thanks for watching. If you have any questions or if you run into any issues, let me know in the comments below and I will do my best to assist you. Thank you and I will see you in the next video.